Ohio State still has two more days before their opener at Virginia Tech, but their week two opponents, Hawaii, said aloha to their season earlier this morning, or prime time in the islands, with a home win over Colorado. As the Buckeyes will have to deal with a short week following Monday's opener at Virginia Tech before hosting the Rainbow Warriors a week from tomorrow. Mark has more in this Buckeye Beat. While redshirt freshman Sam Hubbard will get the start for the suspended Joey Bosa at defensive end, sophomore Jalen Holmes will see plenty of time too as he returns to his home state. It's going to be loud in there. <laughs> it's going to be loud, but you know, it's our job to make them quiet. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, I played against some of my high school buddies that played for Virginia Tech, and it's just, you know, it's just another challenge. Man, I took a visit there, you know, throughout the recruiting process, and I got the experiences. So it's, uh, it, it gets pretty rowdy over there, but um, we just got to focus on the hand and task, and you know, we got to realize that, you know, we're going there, we got a job to do, and we just got to stay focused and, you know, uh, you know, focus on the game and you know, not let kind of block all that stuff out. Silver Bullets finished last season on a high note and believe their preparation for this season will help them pick up right where they left off. Um, we want to be really aggressive this year, and so we found some new ways to do that. Um, and I think that we've got really, really good players, great athletes who are confident in what they do and confident in the guys around them. So um, we'll be able to have some change-ups this year and hopefully uh, be able to cause some confusion. For this game specifically, I think we put in more than what we would for a normal game just because of what happened last year, and we felt underprepared last year come, going into that game, both offensively and defensively. And I think uh, this year we've been, we've been working on this game plan all summer and are excited about next week. Yeah, I think guys are uh, they're anxious, they're excited to, to get back on the field. We've been uh, – we did a lot of – one-on-one, -on -one, good on good during camp this year. And so, um, you know, guys I think are just a little bit ready for a change of pace to actually play somebody else now. Um, you know, a lot of preparation has gone into it, but we're definitely ready to show off what we've got. When you think Virginia Tech football, you think Frank Beamer as he has been the longtime head coach at Virginia Tech and has put his mark all over the Hokie record book. Mike Miller from WIMA 1150, our Buckeye Insider, joins us now. And Mike, when you think Virginia Tech, you think Frank Beamer and hand-in-hand -hand his longtime defensive coordinator, Bud Foster. The two of them really developed a game plan a year ago that really flummoxed Ohio State. They sure did, Mark. And, you know, there's some sense they could do it again. And let's don't forget as the Buckeyes head for Lane State, in Blacksburg Monday night in the Frank Beamer era. I believe the Hokies are, are winners at almost 82% of their home games. So clearly those guys have come up with some schemes over the years to win a lot of football games for maybe not teams as talented as this Ohio State team, but certainly a lot of good teams they've beat over the 28 plus years. And while Ohio State clearly peaked the final three games of the season last mm -hmm. year, Virginia Tech peaked in week two with a win over Ohio State. They only finished the year seven and six. They pulled out a victory over Cincinnati in the Military Bowl. Otherwise, it would have been six and seven. Yep. But this was a Virginia Tech team that had some injury situations. Quarterback Michael Brewer, who had a fantastic game against Ohio State, particularly on the mm -hmm. third down conversions, he admitted that he was physically beat up after that Ohio State game. And yep. It took him most of the year to recover from that game. So Virginia Tech, the record last year, maybe not indicative of how good they were. Yeah, I think part of maybe what hurt them, as you hit on it a little bit, where that was such a big win for Virginia Tech, it kind of was the, was the scalp they were looking for, and they got it too early in the season. There, there weren't enough reasons maybe for the Hokies to develop and improve through the course of the year as any staff, any team would prefer. So too big of a win, maybe too early, hurt the Hokies. But I wouldn't undersell Michael Brewer or at all. He's proven that he can play. He was pretty impressive in the bowl game against Cincinnati, and, and I think he's going to be a, a, a going to be a factor for sure Monday night. And Brewer has a very versatile target in tight end Bucky Hodges. Yep. Oh, Hodges is an absolute playmaker. He's one of the best tight ends in the country. He uh, he surely has proved it before. He proved it against the Buckeyes last year. Scored what was essentially the game winning uh, touchdown. And they have all their leading other receivers back, including a lot of good running backs. So. Defensively, D-line very strong for the Hokies, as it usually is. Mm -hmm. 
but they do have a concern about linebacker, and they got a little bit of concern at the safety position as well. There are some places, Mark, that I'm convinced that Ohio State can exploit. That is, the Buckeye offense uh, can exploit. It's going to be hard to do a lot of damage against their corners. Uh, their one corner, Kendall Fuller, is, is a consensus All-American, uh, but there are other ways that Ohio State, if the Buckeyes can go deep, and you mentioned a little bit about the Virginia Tech concerns with linebacker, that's where the hybrid guys like Curtis Samuel and or Braxton Miller, I think are going to have some opportunities. If they can get behind the line of scrimmage, they could maybe go for a long way. Is this game going to be won or lost when Ohio State has the ball? Yeah, I think it is, actually. I think if the Buckeye offense can score some points, the defense will hold Virginia Tech down to a moderate number. I'm thinking somewhere in the teens that, that it's all about the Ohio State offense. If they can score, Virginia Tech, I don't think, is going to be able to hang with them. The Ohio State defense really came on strong the second half of the season, particularly in that playoff push, as really the entire team did. Mm -hmm. But is it going to be difficult for that defense to, to go back to where they were against Alabama, against Oregon? I don't think it happens maybe necessarily right away, but it, it doesn't need to be long. And with the veteran status of this defense, especially the back seven, I mean, we all talk about how important it is to be strong up front with Tommy Shutt and Adolphus Washington and some of those guys. That sort of sets the tone even without Joey Boza. But the Ohio State linebackers and the Ohio State secondary, the exception of a single new quarter, uh, Gary and Connolly, I think with that back seven as good and experienced as it is, I really suspect the defense to pick right up up where it left off, if not be better. What's your biggest concern for Ohio State heading into Blacksburg? Well, the, the obvious turnovers, certainly, always that you hear, and, and that's a legitimate. Uh, defensively, I really don't have a lot of concerns. I, I frankly, more am concerned about the offense with their timing and being able to utilize some of these weapons because outside of, of Michael Thomas, the receiving core is pretty raw. I mean, guys haven't really played a whole lot. So I think maybe offensive timing to me is a big factor, but the difference maker should be Ezekiel Elliott. This will be the first time Ohio State has had a true road game to open a season since 1998 when they went to Morgantown, West Virginia, and beat the Mountaineers. Of course, in 1999, they opened up away from Columbus as they lost to Miami in the old kickoff classic yeah. in East Rutherford. Well, for Mike Miller, I'm Mark Koontz. That's going to do it for us. We'll send it back to Andy.